Well, Seb, you mentioned critical race theory, and this is something that conservatives like you talk about a lot at the moment. It's also something that concerns me, uh, or at least I, I don't claim to really know exactly the, the nuances of critical race theory. I just think uh, teaching people that some races are better than others is probably not a good idea because, like you, I've read a little bit of history. But um, tell me, what is critical race theory before we get into talking about it? All right. Well, the, the, the formal answer is it's a it's a it's a way of looking at justice in the world that was named by Derek Bell. Uh, it's interesting when when we won the Cold War in 1989, when the West won and the you know the East Germans took down the Berlin Wall. The very same year, there was a conference where Derek Bell, a, a radical uh, law professor from Harvard coined the term critical race theory, but it's built upon a much, much longer progression uh, that, that is basically the, the inculcation of Marxist thought into academia in general. So le le let's, let's just, I mean, your, your viewers may know this, but let's unpack it for a second. Uh, communism was meant to create revolutions around the world because there's an there's a, a inherent tension in, in all societies of the oppressed and the oppressor, the working class and the capitalist. Uh, Marx stole from Hegel and he took his version of the dialectic and said, there's, there's this material version of the dialectic and sooner or later the tension between the oppressed and the oppressor is going to explode in a revolution and that's when we get justice in a classless society. Well, the, the sad thing is for the communists, it was a failure. It was garbage. It was false science. The only place where it could work were backward feudal states like a Tsarist Russia or, or, or China in 1948 after the Kuomintang, where you didn't have a strong middle class that was robust and had Judeo-Christian values and said, this, is, this philosophy is cra crackers. I'm not going to subscribe to it. In, in robust Western societies with a strong middle class and, and Christian or Judeo-Christian values, they needed, a new, they needed a new angle of attack. And this is where the new left and the neo-Marxism comes in, built upon uh, Antonio Gramsci's concepts. There's this crippled Italian communist in one of Mussolini's prison cells, writes his political work saying, in a, in a developed society, you can't have a revolution of the working class. The middle class is too robust. So you can't go frontally against them, you've got to undermine them from the inside. And it's the long march through the institutions. This is where the Frankfurt School, Adorno, Marcuse, and so forth come, where they say, you've got to capture the culture. How do you capture the culture? You've got to take the class-based tension and you flip it and you say, what are, the, what are the other ways we can engender tension in a robust society with middle class. If it's not going to be class, it's going to be sexual identity. It's going to be race. And this is where critical race theory comes in. Critical race theory says that oppression is endemic in Western civilization. Even if they don't know it, white men, especially white heterosexual men, are inherently oppressive. And there has to be a a, a forced redress. This is not equality, but equity. The system has to push down the oppressor constantly so that the, the, the minorities can find their, their just place. That's really, you know, the, the concept of critical race theory. That, that I mean, it, it is the antithesis of Martin Luther King. It's saying skin color is actually connected to attributes that you cannot ever get rid of, and especially the white world is guilty. That's critical race theory, and it's now very, it's pervasive through U.S. schools and is being injected into the, new, the U.S. military by the uh, new administration. And Seb, you know, we're talking about critical race theory, and you say it's being injected into schools, but sh as a theory, surely it should be allowed to be taught in colleges as a theory. Like yeah, you would but, study a range of other theories. Like common. Right, yeah. but, but, but we're not talking about college. We're, we're, we're talking about pre-K. We're talking about kindergarten. I mean, th this is the shocking story. And, it, and it's, not st it's not taught as a theory amongst other theories. It is t taught as the worldview. So there are stories of, of kids in very, very well-to-do posh families in Manhattan where this stuff is out of control in the private schools. I mean, really, uh, really sad stories of these kids coming home and saying to their mom, mommy, am I a racist because I'm white? 
That, that's, that's not the teaching of a theory that is indoctrination. When, when you have people being shamed in, you know, in front of their class, having to stand up um, because you're white and apologize for slavery in 2021, that's not you know, teaching the difference between neoliberal, neoclassicist theories of international relations. That is, that is Orwellian North Korean indoctrination. Th- this is the self-criticism of, of the Maoists that we saw with the Great Leap Forward and the Cultural Revolution, where you, you have to publicly shame yourself in front of others because of your skin color. So teaching as a theory, yeah, that would that would be not an issue. But when a six-year-old is being told, you need to apologize because you're white, that's indoctrination. 